It's April 1st, we're coming to you live from the Dome here in Swakopmund from Namibia to the world. Good evening and welcome to Skills Talk. This is our final episode. For those of you who've been joining us in the entire week, we've had very in-depth conversations about the significance of technical vocational education training uh, in Namibia and also on the continent. This is the second time this event's been hosted, the first time in 2019 in Kigali, and I think Namibia has raised the stakes. But all of this happens because people come together and share the responsibility of who has a role and a significant impact to make. Now we're talking about investment to make World Skills Africa Swakopmund happen tonight and to join us we have uh, starting there right next to me actually uh, some of the people that have made it happen Ms. Jacqueline Pack who is the Executive Officer of Marketing and Corporate Communication Services at Bank Vinter. Good evening and welcome to Skills Talk. Thank you very much Sam. Nice to be here. Very good. And then we also have Ms. Mercy Sidumbeko, who is the Manager of Education, Training and Development at NAM Power and plays a dual role, wears many hats as well, as the head of the Vocational Training Center. Uh, very interesting, as I was saying. I didn't know that NAM Power had a, had a VTC as well, so that will be an interesting conversation. Last but not least, the man that has barely slept <laughs> since Namibia got the rights to host this, Mr. Sense Shilongo, who is the Project Manager of World Skills Africa Swakopmund 2022, the captain of the ship. Good evening and welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank well, let's start with you. Uh, let's talk about uh, what is required, particularly in terms of investment. Uh, it's one thing to host an event, but we know a lot is happening on the back end. Let's talk particularly about investment and why you need partners like Bank Ventric and Empower to make, uh, and obviously all your other sponsors as well, uh, to make an event like this happen. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sim, and of course, thank you to all the viewers out there for having been following us uh, throughout the week. Uh, I would start off saying that we had a great week here in Swakopmund. And as you know, tomorrow we are going to have the closing ceremony, and I hope that ends well. But coming back to your question, I don't want to respond directly in the relationship to this event only. You know, if you go around the street and if you, talk, you, you find people talking about uh, skiing, they would always say that training is expensive. Mm. But I would always say that training is not expensive if everyone could realize what their role is in skiing Namibia. Mm. As the NTA, we need to train the people so that we send them in the market out there. The market needs to receive the well-trained people if they could also not realize the need of them coming on board, making sure they support the system to have everybody sufficiently and well-trained, they should also be ready to get a half-baked program. So it is the realization of the contribution each party, whether uh, it's an industry partner, whether it is uh, a bank, whether it's a training institution or us, what do we have to play? So, of course, an event of this magnitude takes quite a lot of resources. And definitely the NTA cannot do it by itself. It should have partners. But it should have partners that want, want to associate with the skiing agenda. 
who have seen that uh, Namibia to make it, like any other economies that have made it in the world, we have to join hands, we all have to make a contribution, we have to help and make it possible. If you have been walking around the week and look the investment that is going in there, which is a worthwhile investment, it was made possible because of the partners that we have on board. Why do you call it an investment versus expenditure, for instance? You know, why, 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 why is the lens uh, important here? Uh, really, if you incline yourself to calling it an expenditure, you would miss the whole picture. It's an, it is an investment. You are investing in the Namibian child. You are investing in the African child that will help not only Namibia but the continent to grow. So invest in them while now. Other than allowing them to come in the industry knowing nothing, then you are investing a lot now in retraining them. So it's an investment that has gone absolutely right. Well, to talk mm. also about this investment, we're joined on Zoom uh, by Mr. Nico Moya, who is the manager of New Business and Research at the NBC. Good uh, evening, Nico. We'll be coming to you uh, once we've dealt with our uh, real-time uh, panelists as well. But I think uh, Nico is joining us there. You can see him uh, come up appear on your screen. Thank you, Nico, for making the time out uh, to join us as the sponsor from the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation. Let's move to NAM Power. Um, you know, a lot of the times when we speak about training education, there's just a common understanding that it's the sole responsibility of, of just the state and the education institutions. What is an institution that is in charge of ensuring that, this, that the country has electricity? Why do you take interest uh, in the TVET and, and why do you have a responsibility towards it? Uh, first of all, um, I want to address the issue of why don't you call it an invest, I mean, why do you want to call it an investment and not an expenditure? I really like what Sense said. For example, we also see it as an investment because when you invest in something, you know there is that trust that something great is about to come out. We, I mean, the world is, is investing in Bitcoin and whatnot because they are trusting on the outcome, on the return on, of investments. So with NAMPOWER, um, first of all, we do have um, uh, a policy a, 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 a corporate social investment policy. In that policy, the main focus and the core priority is actually TVET, training, vocational education and training. We are a company that is really a key stakeholder when it comes to um, skills and we are very dependent on vocational skills. Um, to, 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 to electrify, we depend on not necessarily all engineers, but we actually um, depend more on the artisan. The artisan is the one who gets to actually do. I mean, we're making it a bit more fancy but by moving a step further and, and, and now bringing in the whole automation thing. But we realize as a key stakeholder that without an artisan, without TVET, I mean, uh, technical vocational uh, training and education, lights will not happen. Uh, chairs will not happen. <laughs> no trade. I mean, we just need to make that investment. We just need to make an investment. We are very dependent on skills as NAMPOWER, as an organization. Is that corporate social responsibility? One million dollars uh, was given by Bank Vintuk as an investment we've established. It's not expenditure. Uh, that's clear. Why? You know, we have a firm belief that um, any organization does not exist in isolation of its environment and community. And basically when the community is uh, uh, prosperous, the organization also prospers. So this uh, philosophy is so true to Bank Ventu. And as a truly Namibian bank, our purpose is to be connectors of positive change. And we believe with the sponsorship towards world skills, it's a testimony of our efforts to affect positive change in Namibia. Yes. That, that, that sounds very, uh, you know, interested in, in what happens to young people. Uh, and, and it's not just looking inwards, it's also looking outwards to your environment. So, so since, how does this change the life of young people? You know, I always say, you know, before there is TVET, you don't have anything to do, you go through this machine of TVET, when you come out on the other side, uh, what does your life look like? <laughs> Sam, uh, if you know the type of event I was just attending before I came here, 
There is what we call Champions Trust Forum, which is just happening at the other venue, another venue here within the Dome, where we have now brought all the competitors together. We have brought in the African representative on the World Skills Champions Trust. Uh, her name is Elfrisia Mulenga from, from Zambia. She participated as aircraft uh, mechanic in Abu Dhabi in 2017. Then she was chosen to represent Africa on the Champions Trust of the whole world, replacing our own uh, Chihimuse Karairwa, who has been the ch a champion from uh, our Namibian, from Nampawa, a product of Nampawa, that has been the champion. <laughs> if I could tell about how the skills agenda or the world skills has changed the lives of those two and of course of many others. Yeah. It is so amazing. You know, they enter this competition thinking they're just going to compete with others and that's all. Mm. But my friend, we have a lot of corporate bodies looking and observing how these kids are doing. And the exposure they get, the confidence they build, these people become sought after commodities. I can tell of many competitors from Namibia that have, that have participated either in the National Skills Competition or the World Skills Competition. If we are to talk where they are now, they are there, very higher earning, very sought after. That, 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 that we should, so we, we should know. This true sense of mobility that takes place when kids are exposed to TVET. Uh, talk to us about this value addition, particularly in the context of the Nampower Vocational Training Center. I mean, this sounds revolutionary. I don't know if I was living under a rock, oh, yeah. but, but I didn't know that institutions like Nampower uh, have a, a different dimension to them oh, yeah. uh, that, that focuses directly on training. Okay. Um, for example, with us, when we're looking at the youth, I just quickly want to take it from sense as well, and then I'll, I'll get to your, to, your, to your response to your question. Um, he, he has mentioned Bruno. I mean, Bruno is really one. He represented Africa on the Champions Trust. He's really sought after, e even in Nampawa. I think he decided to, to, to resign from that responsibility because there was so much demand from him. This section says, please, mercy, we want that kid. That's this, because of the extra um, skills that they, they acquire through the, 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 world, the, the, the world skills uh, competition, because now th they are forced to engage in skills that are being done and operated at. At a, at a global level, at a global level. Now it changes the main thing for us in Nampawa that the impact that World Skills has had is the perception of TVET. You know, apart from the youth, I, I'm really addressing, especially this time around, I'm addressing parents. I've had um, kids who come for, uh, for vocational training and then the parents are the ones that are struggling with the perception. It's like a second-hand level, but you have such good grades. Why do you want to go to, to a vocational training center? But I just want to tell the youth right now, and I'm going to look into the camera, the, the, the TVET is the one that actually employs. TVET is the one that employs people who are um, engineers. It, it, it's an artisan who manages uh, a person who's an engineer. He's an artisan who actually owns a TVET company that will employ um, an electrician, that will employ uh, somebody like a, an accountant. Uh, uh, who they are usually the ones that owns company. They are the ones that run the infrastructure of a country. So I want to address the parents and say, parents, you are missing out on company and institution owners. Yeah. <laughs> so the youth are already catching on quite, yeah. quite fast. Yeah. And the youth, they know that through World Skills Competition, oh my God, it's a magnitude. It's something that is fancy. It makes money. You never run out of needing an electrician. You never stop needing a competitor in, in, in any infrastructure or country or community. So the fact that you still need even a fit antenna, we also do fitting and turning. Just this metal piece where we're standing, where it's stuff like that, it's a fitter antenna who does that. A doctor to operate, it's a fitter antenna for, for cutting and all those um, scalp calls that they always call in, in Grey's Anatomy and stuff like that. So 
really I just want to address the parents and say it is TVET that runs a country and the youth are catching up, are catching on, so parents let's catch on. Your child will always have employment or they will create employment. So it's a double sided. It, 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 it's a double sided <laughs> and it's moving towards the employer, TVET graduates becoming employers. Ms. Pack, we also know that you guys have you know, in-service internship programs. Uh, why do you guys do it and what are some of the, the effects of those type of opportunities for young people? Uh, so, um, I just want to also support what my fellow colleagues said here. Um, when we had the discussion with NTA around the sponsorship, um, they actually shared with us a story of two um, supposedly um, sort of youth coming out of one household. Um, the one uh, went to study, um, I think the one outside of Swako. Yes. And the other one in South Africa. And today, this, um, the, the, uh, the TVET um, sort of tra uh, trainee graduate is the one that's supporting the other one. He landed himself a job um, on the ship's here in, in Wolfish Bay and is earning a decent salary, you know. So I really also want to support and urge uh, parents to embrace TVET. It's definitely the way to go. And I think with COVID as well and everything that has happened around, you know, unemployment, etc., this is an opportunity that we need to grasp and really um, continue to support um, the sort of the likes of NTA and the whole TVET agenda. So, and I think our decision was really based on, on that, um, the fact that um, TVET can accelerate that sort of instantaneous almost um, um, progression in, in re reducing uh, poverty as well as um, unemployment in our country. So we strongly believe that this is a, a vehicle that needs um, adequate support so that we are able to affect that positive change in the community because it has a ripple effect ultimately. Yes. Yeah. And in terms of your own programs, internship programs that you guys have? Right, so we... Um, a graduate program I heard of, for instance. Yes, we do have a graduate program. Um, that um, runs over a period of 18 months. Um, so we take uh, graduates from different disciplines and they actually work in the bank for that period. And once they uh, are done and, you know, there is a sort of consensus in terms of matched cultural, um, 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 you know, um, um, nuances with them and the organization, and there's opportunities actually within the various disciplines of the bank, then they are taken up. Um, secondly, we also have a, a, a huge um, a program that we run for um, our employees where they can get um, study loans to study. And most recently, the Capricorn Group, which we are a, a proud member of, has launched a digital academy um, where our staff members can do online courses at their own pace and they then uh, upon uh, completion get certification. Okay. So that's in a nutshell what we do. <laughs> Interesting uh, that, that, yes. that, that, that people have centralized skills development and particularly the in-service level uh, to ensure their, in, their own sustainability. Uh, since the theme this year is promoting skilled development, skills development in the 21st century, so it's very time specific uh, for sustainable economic growth and African ownership. Let's talk a little bit about this idea of ownership and, and how not just investment allows for it, but, but how it changes realities. Why is this the theme uh, for this World Skills Africa Swag Movement? So, uh, before I talk about the choosing of the theme and the relevance of the theme to this year's event, I just wanted to add a little bit in terms of uh, how the participation of our former competitors, for example, at this event, just to highlight what benefits they have been able to accrue and so forth. You see, this competition we have former competitors that either competed in 
2015, 2017 or 2019, most of them have become now trainers in the training system. And I've got three of them that are now serving as experts at this year's event. We have a number of them serving as workshop managers. We have a number of them serving as Atachi, helping other countries that are now here in Namibia, uh, taking them through and so forth. So really, you could see that the system is working. Now coming back to the choosing of the theme, and specifically with, with, with regard to, to, what is it we said? Ownership. Well, it, sh it, it should be for everyone to understand that if there is a continent on this earth that is blessed with resources, is the African continent. But if, I don't want to use the word exploitation, it doesn't sound well uh, in today's world, but it truly is that if there is a continent that is exploited in terms of it is resources being shaped and processed everywhere, uh, elsewhere, it's still the African continent. Why? We have to change the status quo and the only way you can do so is when we start owning up to our own resources. We have to resource our people very well so that they start taking ownership of their resources. We have to start adding value to our resources right here on the African soil. We cannot be talking, of course, I don't want to involve myself in controversial topics, but we cannot be talking of oils and we still ship it out of, out of the continent to be refined just for us to buy it again at an expensive rate. We have to do something about that as African. That's why we are talking of African ownership in the 21st century, that Africa, wake up. God has blessed you up, rentedly. So, Because maybe in the 20th century you didn't own these things. Yeah, yeah, but okay. it's on the 21st century. So, sure, sure. <laughs> so we have to take time is now for Africa to take charge of its own destination, yes. to own and manage its resources. And the only way we can do it is correctly skilling our people. Without skills, we'll be watching. Okay, let's keep it there. Let's bring Nico into this conversation as well. Nico, why is the NBC on board uh, when it comes to uh, this particular World Skills Africa Soccer Point 22? Everywhere you go, you see NBC logos, you see NBC broadcasting, three shows, obviously the closing ceremony, the opening ceremony. We've covered it all. Why, Nico? Why have we covered this event to this extent? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sam, for the question. Um, but before I jump into the question, I just want to contextualize a little bit. Um, you know, when the NTN team, uh, particularly Mr. Sen Shilongo and the team, when they came to see NBC, that was in um, 2016. Uh, they were hosting what we call the World Skills Namibia. So our engagement started then. Uh, we actually pledged to uh, NTN to say we're going to assist you. Uh, we are going to do this together because if you look in terms of our strategic intent as NBC, uh, there's an element of educating the Namibian nation, which is very key. So when we looked in terms of what would be the key scope of work for the NBC, already, you know, it signaled us to look at content development, particularly where TVET, you know, programs are actually uh, are specialized. And then we decided to use our platform basically to educate the nation about how the importance of TVET is right in, 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 in the country in Namibia. Now, in regards to us participating uh, in, the, in the World Skills Africa 2022, in 2019, when we had that Namibia have won the rights to host the World Skills Africa competition, um, already by then, NBC pledged to say that we are going to assist you in regards to the production the broadcasting, as well as the advocacy of the World Skills Africa, not only within Namibia, but beyond Namibia. Because if you look in terms of our platforms, we do have digital platforms that allow people beyond the borders of Namibia to be able to watch TV as well as listen to radio. So um, this was actually in terms of what we pledged. But if you look in terms of uh, what we stand for as a public broadcaster, our interest mainly 
it's to look at the wider social and educational issues uh, and how we want to position ourselves within the market by pushing education within the Namibian market. So all of these key pillars led to us basically, you know, to be part and parcel of the World Skills Africa 2022. The NBC has sponsored a value in kind sponsorship worth two million Namibian dollars. The sponsorship covers a broad spectrum of specialized media productions, advertising, and broadcasting support, obviously, including the daily live television broadcasts of the event on television, as well as social media that's, as you said, been watched from all over the world. How would you describe the broadcast of these events? Uh, did we do a good job? Yes, no, 100% we did an amazing job. Um, as you know, uh, based on the audience research from NEPA, an independent research house, NBC attracts 1.6 million audiences on its platform. That's within the borders of, of, of Namibia. Now, for us to be able to fully execute our mandate or as per the given scope of work, based on the MOU that was uh, signed between the two parties, we decided basically to customize all our broadcasts. So by customizing our broadcast, uh, we allowed the two parties basically to have a live um, opening ceremony, as well as having skill talk show like this one that we are on now, that is replacing some of our daily programs that normally runs. And then we introduced uh, daily updates. You could see this with the morning updates, the midday updates, and the evening updates. And then on top of that, uh, we engaged all our platforms that's inclusive of all the radio stations, all the digital pages, whether it's just small updates of a certain skill that is happening within uh, our at the World Skills um, Africa 2022. We were posting that instantly on our social media pages. What we did well as well was to advocate a month prior to the event itself, just to inform all the Namibians what is expected. In doing so as well, we did not forget about the key stakeholders of um, NTA, uh, that's the sponsors. So we carried all the brands for the sponsors to give them unlimited mileage during this journey. So in short, uh, I would say the whole production and the mandate that NBC was given to execute for this project, it's at 110%. Nick, uh, let's not be the referees and the players, but I'm sure the public out there <laughs> will agree with you as well. Uh, let's move on to uh, Ms. Mercy. What does this mean when you put money in into a vehicle like, you know, World Skills Africa, Swakopmund, and it gets to its desired destination? What does it mean? Are you getting your, your ROI uh, on your investment? <laughs> Um, I, I, as since earlier indicated, we've been um, taking part in the World Skills since 2015, and I'm always very proud to actually say on the electrical installation, it has been Nampao trainees who has been representing Namibia. And, and that investment in itself, it, it has really um, come out and, and since mentioned how most of these tra former trainees or former participants they're really elevated in terms of their impact and what they, they are doing for the country. And um, for example, right now we have about two um, former participants on the national as well as international level who have now really been trained to do their building automation, meaning that now electricity, just like the way we do on TV, like you, you use a remote control, so now you can actually um, start switching off and on your electricity using from, from an app on your mobile. Um, whether you're going, and I, I was jokingly telling some, some students today, like whether I'm on the plane going to visit Kim Kardashian in Dubai, <laughs> I, if I forgot my lights and somebody just tells me, hey, um, so the app would tell me, is it in the bedroom, is it in the kitchen? I can actually control the electricity there. Uh, and, and it's one of the things that I feel like as Nampower, we already started getting our um, return on investment based on how we have changed our training curriculum. We're already going into renewable energies. We already started venturing into automation even before COVID happened. So it's something that we're really, really proud that we're moving way, way ahead and now not just keeping that skill. 
Now what we've done, as I said, we're, we've trained these uh, former trainees. Now we want them to start training others. So that is already beyond return on investment, as you can see. So we want to share the skills with not just the non-power trainees, but we want to take it further and actually share it with NTA, share it with all other uh, TVETs that are interested. So such a platform allows us to network to that level. Yeah. The same question to you, particularly when people hear one million, they'll be like, oh, yo, yo, in these times, eh? <laughs> how did you do it? Why is your bigger interest at looking at the benefits to the people? Why is, why is, why is what you spoke about earlier more important, the environment and enabling and, and ensuring a human-centered approach in the way that we do business? Why is that a priority to you and the bank versus, uh, you know, just the money, the finances? <laughs> Well, um, I think um, as earlier stipulated, our, our social responsibility is really embedded within the organization and our core focus um, under social responsibility is to assist government in their national development priorities. And this being one of them, it definitely um, sort of um, also complements what we are doing in terms of efforts in um, economic progression. So why are we doing this as Bank Vintuk is really, I think it's, it's, it's for us, it's not a short term view, it's really a long term view. Because if the community uh, progresses, we also progress, as I stipulated earlier. And um, if people um, are able to get jobs, they're also able to open up bank accounts. They're able to um, be included in um, our financial ecosystem. So for us, it's really beneficial and it is um, really not a short term, but a rather a long term um, investment when it comes to NTA, NTVET, etc. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The first day I was interviewing uh, here on Skills Talk, the former Deputy Minister that's been working in Egypt as well. Uh, and do you think sometimes we we'll miss that long-term perspective, that the returns are maybe not for the people in school right now, but it is, you know, creating a better path for the generations? Uh, do sometimes do we miss that, 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 that long-term investments mm -hmm. are, I think, the foundations of a better society? Sense? What's your sense? <laughs> <laughs> What a question, yeah. <laughs> no, Sam, you, you are absolutely right in that assessment that uh, when people are looking at investment, they look more in a short term, uh, which, which should not be the case. Uh, some of these results, I know when I brought on board this uh, skills competition agenda back in 2011, when I was sent to London to observe the, the, the then, the, the, the version of World Skills Competition that year. Then I came back and I wrote the, 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 the plan to establish World Skills Namibia and to establish the National Skills Competition. The first question that anybody you meet would ask, is this not too costly? Where will you get the funds from? What are the benefits? Then when you are telling the people that the benefits cannot, should, and should not be felt now, they say, no, 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 no. We want something. We have to show that something is coming out of now. I said, no, put my head on the block. We are talking of economic benefits that is coming to the country in the long run. And as I earlier said, that the only way we can change and we can own our resources is when we skill now and have those resources in our own hands in the future. So we have to start looking in that long-term benefit to the country and even to the individuals. We should not be talking of short-term benefits. Otherwise, we are I mean, failing in our assessment. Well, I think that's, I think, the core of you know, understanding how we improve on people. Um, so, so just before I cross over to Nico, Ms. Mercy, a lot of the times people say industry, we're getting recruits that might not be industry ready. Um, what do you say to other companies that have that complaint and haven't taken on the responsibility of, of making sure that they meet the, that, that skills deficit? 
you know, um, I, and I think during this whole World Skills um, Africa, what I keep emphasizing is the fact that, um, honestly, a country's infrastructure depends on, on, on skills. And for me, what I would say to any corporate is the fact that there is something core that you are focusing on. Even if you are, whether you are a bank or something, there's just something that you need to start focusing on in terms of investing mm -hmm. and thinking, am, am I going to focus on maybe um, assisting on the medical side of things? Am I going to focus on maybe ensuring that... Um, there's a bit more return or something in whichever area. So as Nampower, we know that our business is power and electricity. But apart from that, we know that to get to the electricity, we also um, train fitters and turners. Because we know that to get to that electricity, we need that mechanical aspect of things, that metal pieces that will transmit electricity. What do you guys understand that other, other companies don't? And, and why do they remain with a complaint of we, don't, we have a skills deficit? What's different they, about your organizational culture? Our, our organizational culture is really research and really looking at what are the needs today and what will be the needs tomorrow. And this is why I'm using the example of don't just look at now. You are saying you want better medical thing. Start looking at what are you, the, your operations today, how do they impact the under, other industries? So I'm really excited, apart from the banking side, that even Bank Vindu can say, hey, this thing is important. Because Bank Vindu is, you, it, it, I think you're actually looking beyond them opening bank accounts. They are looking beyond that and looking at, oh, where will I get my next chair? You understand? So companies, please just research in terms of what is your passion when it comes to what you want to see physically. What, we all are talking about the bad roads of Namibia. Let's start investing in, okay, um, even a road, for it to be a very good road. Oh my God, we all like we're saying, oh, it's busy roads and we wish we had five lanes and stuff like that. Um, so corporate needs to start focusing on all those areas. Say, hey, what can I, what can I invest in that will make the infrastructure or an infrastructure better? Well, we actually, let's, let's conclude that part because, you know, even when you're looking at some of the trade policy reports that come out from the regional institution, SADC, it says in order to enable your macroeconomic environment, mm -hmm. you need infrastructure, skills, and financing simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this combination with the skills there, with the infrastructure yes. being developed, and with the financing here, is, is really what's needed. And so how do we go about not choosing just one or just prioritizing one? Maybe you can conclude by speaking towards why we need all three. Um, we, we need all three, like I said, because I, when you're focusing on the future, when you're actually focusing on one, you're focusing on the here and now. Mm -hmm. So the thing is like a wheel, you know, it's like a snowballing thing. When you're focusing on the infrastructure, especially on the finances, you're looking beyond five years. Mm -hmm. You're looking before, beyond five years, and with that, I am really appealing to corporate and say, honestly, skills are the future. That really will impact your grandkids. That will ensure that we have better roads. That will even ensure that we have better water quality. I mean, we've seen the water purifications. That will ensure that, honestly, the, you know those exciting movies that we see about the future? It's only us, honestly, corporate, when we put our two cents and nine cents and two million to it, that that future will happen for our kids. Let's talk about the financing aspect. Uh, where is positioning, is Bank Vintage positioning itself uh, to kind of fuel the engine? Yes. <laughs> no, I think we, um, we take pride in relationships that we have built with, um, you know, the likes of NTA, Nampower. Actually, both are our clients, very <laughs> funny. Um, so we, we um, will continue to foster these relationships. And I think it's a matter of taking each other's hands and um, you know, uplifting um, our own Namibia. Um, as uniquely Namibian organizations, we definitely owe that um, to our future selves and as well as for the future uh, generations to come. So for us is really um, taking hands as um, building and fostering our relationships going further. Yeah. Nico, uh, uh, in conclusion, with regard to the NBC's mandate uh, this week, have we been successful at achieving, at uh, informing the world and Namibia, at educating them and at entertaining them? Uh, what's your 
response to this? Have we uh, done what we have set ourselves out to do? In the, indeed, uh, I think from NBC side, uh, we've achieved a lot. Uh, we have uh, collected all the content for the whole week. That's beautiful content for television. Uh, we have a beautiful library now. Um, so our journey doesn't stop now. Our journey is to continue to advocate about TV programs. Our journey is basically to use, you know, our platforms that are the biggest platforms within the country to advocate about, about these programs. So in, in, in terms of us achieving what we intended to achieve, we did that same. Um, just to give you another example, what, what we did is uh, the both parties, that's NTA and NBC, engaged the multi-choice Namibia group so that they can open the channel you know, within the SADC member state. So what this signifies is, it signifies is, um, one contributing unity within the SADC member state for them to be able to showcase, uh, for, for, for us to be able to showcase in terms of what we are producing and the quality production that we are producing towards educational content. That's number one. Number two, um, if you look in terms of the sitting uh, president of SABA, what we call Southern African Broadcasting Association is the director general of the NDC. And the director general of the NDC and the SABA itself was given the mandate by the SADC secretariat to put together a SADC TV channel. So opening this channel, the NDC channel to um, the SADC member state, it shows that we are very close in attaining you know, our objective of having a SADC TV channel bouquet. Now, in my conclusion, further conclusion, uh, I'll say as participating in the World Skills um, for Africa 2022 uh, gave us an opportunity as well, an opportunity to attract shareholders who share the same values that the NDC shares. Um, uh, Ms. Jacqueline Park mentioned the element of uh, NumPower and NTA being their clients. So both Bank Venduk, NumPower, as well as NTA, they are all, also clients of the NBC. So they are advertising on the NBC platforms. So from NBC side, um, we just want to conclude to say um, the viewers and the listeners should tune in tomorrow so that they can watch the final closing ceremony. Thank you very much, Sam. With you yet you don't you don't you don't get it right away like that but my <laughs> final question really is do you think the nbc has only looked in terms of market access uh, you know internally within the country and and, 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 and events like this world skills africa uh, puts nbc in a position to look outwardly and open and expand its market not just to namibia but to you know the SADC and the continent is that a strategy that you are going to be intentional about moving forward uh, to ensure that NBC's content has been consumed uh, as an export uh, out of the country? Lovely. No, that's a great question, Sam. Uh, as you know that we are producing high quality um, content. One of them is the Namibian Music uh, uh, Awards, annual awards, whereby each and every member state that we have spoken to, particularly the ones that fall under, under SABA, They've shown a great interest. Whenever we have these shows, they want us actually to give them the live uh, stream so that they can broadcast within, within the region. So uh, this opportunity of opening the NBC and exposing it to the SADC member state, it gives us another added advantage of fully commercializing our content that we are producing, quality content that we are producing on high definition. We saw the contents like on the street. Uh, we saw the content like the board with Marianne Pembe. We have amazing content called Water Lifestyle, which is a sellable commodity. And indeed, we are going to take advantage of this and uh, fully engage you know, our partners within the, 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 the member state of, uh, of SADAC for them to be able to buy our content. Okay. Uh, we're looking forward to be in, on the television screens on the continent. That, that, that looks like an exciting venture for us here at the NBC. Uh, obviously, we, we're wrapping up and we're moving towards the end. Uh, and, and as we do that, I think part of the challenge uh, a lot of the times in developing countries is the fragmentation of institutions between the various stakeholders. Um, since it seems like we are slowly but surely bringing the people together, uh, talk to us about the power of collaboration. I think uh, if I should start with the two partners that are here and uh, adding Nico, you can agree with me that uh, we have all been talking of the same agenda and we have been talking of co-ownership of that agenda. That when you are doing it and you co-own it and you all are sharing the same vision, it is so great. 
Look, uh, possibly I would not get the opportunity to thank really honestly all the partners that uh, that were on board uh, World Skills Africa SWAKOP in 2022. The two plus the NBC, they are not alone. And if you look at the response, uh, mind you, we are just coming out of COVID. But the response from those that came on board to become partners, without mentioning numbers, but I would confidently say that two thirds of our budget being covered through sponsorship and partnership, that already talks about a shared vision. And I would thank particularly the NBC that to, to honor the gesture from all those partners that came on board. Really, NBC went an extra mile to make sure this event is well taken to the public. I could agree 100% with what uh, uh, Nico was just saying now. He is not self-praising. He is telling the truth. That all the stakeholders that we have here, the partners, remember we also have global partners that have been st long standing global partners for World Skills International. But they are talking of optimal exposure that they have never received in any other countries. They have been supporting some of these events. So NBC did go an extra mile to, to, to make sure this voice is heard not only in Namibia, but on the continent and the entire world. So for partners that came on board, and I'm now looking forward that uh, we would have uh, Shanghai, China around the corner, where would, we would be taking all of our competitors. And I want to catch the moment while it is uh, still fresh in the minds of our stakeholders, that look, we have seen countries coming to this international skills competition in bigger number, and I'm not referring only to the number of competitors. I want stakeholders, our partners, to come on board. And I will make it a point that as soon as the registration process has been opened up, we will invite all our local partners, current and potential ones, to come support the team and also to be part of the team that is going to Shanghai. It's only when one see it, sees it at that level that it opens their eye. I have been mentioning the likes of Nampawa that came on board since 2015 and they have never set their foot back. They continue improving on their support and participation at national and international level. So I want all potential partners, future partners, that believe in skilling the Namibian nation to be part of the team to Shanghai, China in September. Please contact World Skills Namibia Secretariat so that we all go there as a team, World Skills Namibia team in Shanghai. I think you all have heard the noise the South African put up here, yes. running around the whole venue, trying, I don't know, to scare our competitors or something. Oh, yes. But it, is, it, it, it's, it was really amazing. It was really emotional to see such a big thing. Do you know that South Africa is here with a delegation of 239 people all together, from observers to competitors. They are a total of 239. It's passion they are showing yeah. that we have to rally behind our team. Mm. We have to support the youth mm. because that's the only key we have to our future. And Namibia should start doing the same. And uh, observing from what we have already, I think the message is correct. And I'm just hoping for the bit <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> Ms. Mercy, final concluding remarks? Um, honestly, as you have said, um, we, we need to, to collaborate and really this, this, this whole event really shows, like, uh, I just thought, um, was it yesterday or two days before, some of my Nampawa colleagues actually had to come to Erongo just to ensure, because somebody said something, they had to come to Erongo just to make sure that all the assets, asset maintenance is being done because this, this event is taking place. So you can already see that we want to ensure that there's no any, because suddenly in one place there's so much power going out. If Erongo Red experiences uh, something wrong with the connectivity, they called on, our, I mean, on their non-power partners, on their big sisters, say, hey, we, we, we don't want something to go wrong. That is partnership already. 
again, I'm really imploring to other corporates and say we can only, this can only happen. Nampower can only move on to the global level of operations when we come together. Yeah. Ms. Jackie, final words? Yes, I'm so um, actually astonished um, when I hear of how many people are here from outside of Namibia. So it means that um, our investment as well has actually had a ripple effect in terms of um, also um, uplifting the um, tourism industry. So I can imagine in terms of Irongo how this has also um, created um, a bit of um, positivity in the tourism industry. So from our side, we are extremely excited to be part of this and we will definitely take each other's hands going forward um, to elevate uh, TVET and world skills in the country. Yes. Thank you very much. I think uh, that's all the time we had for tonight's show, but I think it's important. This conversation is all week. This is the final show of Skills Talk uh, that we've had, but the conversations have been very insightful. I think our purpose here was to have an in-depth look at, at the ecosystem of TVET. Obviously, there's various components uh, from technology uh, to the role that the com competitors themselves play in terms of the skills they've had prior to this. But thank you very much. Keep investing in young people's futures. Um, the provision of TVET, obviously, in Namibia and the world is a shared responsibility, especially if we want to ensure that it is a quality program that changes opportunities uh, for young people to have access uh, to mobility. For me, Patrick Sam, uh, hopefully we'll meet soon again. But for now, from the Dome in Sokopmund in Namibia to the rest of the world, this was the final Skills episode. Join us tomorrow for the closing evening. Good night. <laughs> Be a man of bravery, how quick I say cake one. This is what you want, a quick sahoka. This is what you want, a quick sahoka. Bye. Bye.